This is the story of China Airlines Flight 642. The planes we fly on feels massive and sturdy, but the slightest turbulence throws our massive planes around like rag dolls. So pilots have a healthy amount of respect for Mother Nature and her winds. You see a massive storm front, you vector around it. If the winds are too strong, you divert. If the weather puts you in a situation where you're not sure you can make a safe landing, you abort. But sometimes mistakes happen, and that's what we're going to talk about today. It's the 22nd of August, 1999, and off the coast of Hong Kong, tropical typhoon Sam rages on. The entire Pacific region has been hit by massive storms over the past year, and typhoon Sam is the latest to do so. Thousands of miles away in Thailand, on the ground at Bangkok, an MD-11 sits on the ground at Don Muang International Airport. The MD-11 is China Airlines Flight 642, heading from Dong Wang International Airport to Chiang Kai-shek International Airport in Taiwan, with a stopover in Hong Kong. The crew on the ground at Bangkok kept an eye on the typhoon. They were well aware of the fact that the typhoon would be near Hong Kong by the time that they got there. The crew's briefings laid out the facts. They were to expect strong winds and heavy rains as they flew into Hong Kong. The crew was aware of the problems that landing at Hong Kong would bring with it. The pilots on that day opted to carry some extra fuel so that they could hold or divert from Hong Kong if needed, which is something that they might actually have to do given how bad the weather is. The plane took off from Bangkok with 315 people on board. As the plane cruised, the pilots went over the weather at Hong Kong. They knew that they'd be facing crosswinds when landing in Hong Kong. The crew looked at the limits of the airplane. The crosswind limit for the airplane on a wet runway was 24 knots. As long as the winds held under that limit, they'd be fine. Later on in the cruise, the crew turned to the ATIS or Automatic Terminal Information Service for the weather information at the airport. The news isn't encouraging. The wind was at 320 degrees and had a mean speed of 30 knots and a maximum of 45 knots. Well above the company's threshold of 24 knots, but they look at the winds. They expect the winds to move away by the time that they get to Hong Kong. It's 10:14 a.m. Hong Kong Area Control issues the descent clearance for the MD-11. They refer the ATIS information one more time. This time, the wind is coming in from 300 degrees and has a mean speed of 30 knots. They are told to expect severe wind shear and heavy turbulence. At 10:17 a.m., the plane begins its descent. The commander gave the approach briefing. An approach briefing is when you communicate what you are planning to do in this landing, what you do if something goes wrong, how to execute a missed approach, etc. The commander briefs the crew on the approach to runway 25 right, but the ATIS system tells them that the runway is 25 left instead. Moreover, they expect to have choppy weather ahead. Yet no mention is made of what is to be done for a missed approach, other than a cursory reference to the missed approach procedure in their checklist. At 10:25 a.m., the plane is handed off to Hong Kong Approach Control. The ATC vectored the plane to intercept the ILS of runway 25 left, but the crew still believed that they'd be landing on runway 25 right. The extra fuel that they took on board as a precaution was now becoming a problem. The extra fuel meant that they were heavy, so heavy in fact that their 99.87% of their maximum allowable landing weight. Let me put that in perspective. They were 201 kilos or 443 pounds under the maximum landing weight. A challenging landing has been made even more difficult. At 10:36 a.m., Flight 642 was given a heading of 230 degrees to intercept the localizer from the right. They were given the final landing clearance. The commander, realizing his mistake, quickly rebriefed the crew on the landing at runway 25 left. It's 10:38 a.m. The plane is 14 nautical miles from the airport, and the plane is handed over to Hong Kong Tower. At 10:41 a.m., the crew get their weather reading. The wind is coming in at 320 degrees at 25 knots, with gusts up to 33 knots. They continue to descend. At 700 feet, the crew see the approach lights, and the captain disengages the autopilot and takes manual control of the plane. He, however, 
leaves the auto throttle on as it controlled the speed of the airplane. As he disconnected the autopilot, the plane was still on the extended center line, an imaginary line drawn from the center of the runway, but it was a bit low. The landing went on despite the winds and the captain held the plane steady. The plane hits 250 feet. The co-pilot notices that the speed has dropped significantly and calls, Speed! The throttles were advanced and the plane accelerated to 175 knots. This was way too fast and the crew pulled the throttles back. As they did, the plane went through 50 feet. The auto throttle commanded idle thrust for landing and the jet lost even more power. As they started to bleed off speed from the peak of 175 knots, the descent rate hit 800 feet per minute. The pilot tries to flare the plane. A flare is a maneuver that is done by a pilot when they raise the nose of the plane by just a bit to soften touchdown onto the runway, that is to touch down as smoothly as possible. But Flight 642 hit the runway hard. They could not slow the plane down. The plane hits the runway in a right wing down attitude. The right engine scrapes along the runway. The landing gear on the right side completely gave out and that put the right wing under enormous stress. So much stress that the right wing snapped off. The plane's broken wing leaks fuel everywhere and starts a fire. The left wing, still producing lift, rolls the plane inverted as it skids along the grass near runway 25 left. Three people lost their lives and 312 people survived. 44 people had serious injuries. All crew members survived. The investigators listened to the recorders hoping that it would shed some light on the incident. They listen to the approach. They see a crew that's off their game. They notice how the crew got confused between runway 25 left and 25 right. This might have been due to a plane requesting runway 25 right before and then it being denied because conditions were too bad at runway 25 right. The captain begins the approach briefing for runway 25 left and the co-pilot asks, if he meant runway 25 right. The captain then, for some reason, continues with the approach briefing for runway 25 right instead. The report finds that the crew were absent. Sure, they were performing the checklist, but their attention was focused elsewhere. As they listen on, they find no discussion of the weather warnings provided by the ATIS system. They were flying into a storm and they hadn't even planned for the most likely scenario, a go around. The runway misidentification and the lack of planning weren't causes of the accident, but it does highlight the human factors at play in this incident. Things really started to go wrong during the final approach. At first, the plane was at 14 nautical miles and beyond. The autopilot compensated for the wind gusts and kept the plane relatively stable. When they hit 13 nautical miles, the wind was coming in at 330 degrees, 26 knots and gusting to 36 knots. Way in excess of the limits, but he continued the approach. He was going to do another wind check at 1000 feet. A bit of confusion about the runways followed. Both runways had different approaches and the crew spent a few seconds reconciling that. At 1000 feet, the wind check came in at 320 degrees, 25 knots and gusting at 33 knots. The tower cleared them to land. The captain asked for another wind check when he was below 1,000 feet. The wind check below 1,000 feet showed that the winds had slightly picked up. This is when he disabled the autopilot as per the MD-11 operating philosophy. The approach continued. They were still stable. At 300 feet, the speed fell to 157 knots and the captain increased power which caused the plane to gain speed. The captain side slips the airplane and brings the nose to line up with the runway, as he should be doing. But due to their excess speed, they pull back power. And when the plane hit 50 feet, the auto throttles automatically killed the throttles. The captain tries to flare the airplane right before touchdown. The elevator deflection was at 16 degrees. The plane noses up, but without thrust, the rate of descent stays the same. To quote the report, in the event, the commanders attempt to flare the aircraft by limited use of elevator alone and without the application of thrust was inadequate and proved unsuccessful in the conditions which he was contending. 
The loss of airspeed due to shifting winds and the lack of thrust during the final portion of landing sealed the fate of Flight 642. In retrospect, it's easy to say that this is what went wrong, but in that plane, on that day, everything went wrong in a matter of seconds. I'm curious, had you been in that situation, what would you have done differently? Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. A big thank you to Curious Plane Spotter for letting me use his amazing videos in my video. I'll catch you guys next time.